There's this a fish. Fish number one here, y'all. Well, I guess it's time to get the video started then, ain't it? So we're starting off today's trip with a bluegill. And boy, he has tore up my gulp minnow first thing. There he is. A little low thing. But it's fish number one. And I'm going to fix this gulp back on here. And I'll tell you what I'm doing out here this evening. It's a afternoon when I'm filming this. I've got a couple hours of daylight left. And my plan is to just come out here and have some fun. I'm going to just be working my way down the shore. I started out here kind of in the back of this pocket. There's a, a log that crosses pretty much the whole thing there. So I didn't want to climb up and over it to get back any further in there and it gets really super shallow back there at the back anyway but i'm starting here where i can and i'm just going to work my way out here throwing at all of this cover these trees and uh, all this debris down through here and everything and just fish for whatever wants to buy tonight these gulp minnows i've said it in so many of my other ultralight videos these gulp minnows on a small jig head and right here tonight i've got the uh 164th ounce jig head with a number eight hook and a one inch gulp minnow on my ultralight setup everything that swims will eat that small gulp minnow so we're just going to be throwing at all this stuff hoping to catch whatever and get a tug on the line so i'm gonna put this camera here back in my chest and make some more casts over here i got a feeling that bluegill there that we got wasn't the only one that's on that tree Boy, something was hitting me right away right there. I done pulled it plumb out of his mouth. Let's try that again. I'm just casting to the edge of that tree and letting that gulp minnow just sink down, just fall down through the water column. Well, something hit me again. I think that's smaller bluegill right there I'm dealing with. But as that thing falls down, it just kind of darts and goes in and out and and for whatever reason that just that triggers these fish you catch a little bit of everything catch a lot of bluegill doing this but you can catch a little bit of everything and i'm out here tonight just wanting to have a good time it's been a long long week with losing my dog and everything and i'm just wanting to come out here tonight and just just try to enjoy myself do something i love to do and this ultralight fishing it's just one of my favorite ways to fish. You always catch fish. There's just another one right there, speaking of catching fish. And so it's just a good way to, you know, enjoy yourself, get your mind off things, and have a good time. And so that's what I'm going to do this afternoon here for the next hour and a half, two hours or so that I've got left to fish here before it gets dark. I'm not going to cover much water this evening. I'm probably spend most of my time here in this pocket or just along the or just along by about knock myself out that thing <laughs> it was coming right back in my head can't talk and reel in at the same time apparently but uh, i'm going to spend most of my time here either in this pocket or just on the main channel ledge outside of this pocket here and um this this thing's loaded with bait it's loaded with right here's something whatever this is but it's just loaded with fish and when you ultralight fishing like i'm doing here tonight it don't take big fish a bluegill like this can give you a tug on the line and strip some drag and helicopter man's flying over at the wrong time because we're trying to talk to the camera let's let him go and let helicopter man get by and we'll pick this up all right helicopter man's out of here we can get back to filming y'all remember that old uh, saturday night live skit in the movie too called wayne's world there was another fish hitting me in that movie wayne's world though they'd be playing hockey out in the street and a car would come by and they'd say game off and the car would go through and they'd say game on that's what I feel right now with that helicopter flying over. Well, I just kept getting hit right there. Let me throw back in there. They were they were hitting me. Like a smaller fish that's on this. Oh, here's one. Here's one big enough to hook up. <laughs> I 
Oh, I had a little bass follow him too. I think that bass was about as big as the bluegill, but he was following him out of there. I just like doing this, y'all. I mean, it's just, it's just so much fun to get out here and do this. Even, even when life's giving you lemons, this is one thing you can do to just come out and and get your mind off things and enjoy yourself. And this is a technique that will work in a variety of lakes, rivers, creeks, ponds, you know, whatever you've got access to. Here's another one. It'll work everywhere because big fish eat small fish and that's what you're representing with this technique. And, and again, you don't need big fish to have a good time with it. So it's just one of them things. It's effective, it's fun. You use the right size gear here, this ultralight and two pound line, you can you can just enjoy any size fish you catch. Oh boy, something snatched me right there. I think that's a little better fish, whatever it is. Ah, it's a little yellow bass. Looky there. I bet that's what followed me up there a minute ago. I pop that thing up and up he come to snatch it. That's a nice yellow bass, too. Let me get him undone here, and I'll get him positioned better here in the sunlight so we can see him. Boy, he's hooked good. He wasn't coming free, was he? There we go. Hang on, Mr. Yellow Bass. Let me turn him around this way so we can get him better in the light there. Look at that thing, man. These are fun fish. They don't get very big, but they are a fun hard fighting fish especially on the ultralight there pretty fish too they're kind of like white bass but they just they're yellow and they got these dark black stripes on them get out of here buddy oh, he gone splashing us on the way out too wasn't he i bet you y'all i bet that's what i seen here uh, a couple minutes ago there when i was pulling that in something come up and swiped at the bait there and i couldn't tell exactly what it was but these yellow bass are schooling fish, so there's probably some more in here too. But uh, anyway, yeah, it was a fun time. Species number two, got the bluegill and now the yellow bass. I have seen some tiny small or some tiny largemouth bass in here also. But uh, I'm not keeping any of these fish tonight for bait or anything. I don't, I don't need any bait. I just wanted to come out here and I was just in the mood, in the mood to do some ultralight fishing. Again, this is one of my favorite ways to fish. And when I just want to go out and get a bunch of fish and I get a bunch of bites, this is what I do. It just never fails me. Oh, he thumped it, man. That in there thumped it. I think that's another bluegill. That is. This in here may be the biggest bluegill that I've got out here so far this afternoon. Ain't saying much. He still ain't no ain't no monster size, ain't no dinner plate size. That's alright. I still enjoy the heck out of him. Boy, now I got an airplane flying up. First it was a helicopter. Now we got an airplane. We're going to get any filming done, any commentary now. I'm going to have to put up a, a no-fly zone over here, apparently. All gone airplane and helicopter pilots. I got another fish here. Even if y'all are getting a bunch of that background noise on the camera. He flung the minnow off. But... Lucky for me, it landed right here on the kayak. I'm just going to hook this thing back through here. I'm going to get these gulp minnows on as straight as you can. As they get chewed up and torn, that'll be hard to do. And you will catch fish as it, as it, if it's on there crooked, but the straighter you can get it, the more it's going to have that kind of natural fall as it goes down through the water column. And that's what's going to get you bit. I had another one hit me right there as it hit the water. Let me reel that in, see what... 
Yeah, he messed that up there. I had one hit it dang near as quick as it hit the water. I think it was a small one. I'm still kind of back here at this one tree. There's a tree that had fallen in the water and a couple more bigger logs around it. And there's just all kinds of fish around it. Bluegill and obviously that yellow bass. I had, I've had two different yellow bass or, or white bass, one of the two, follow me up that I haven't caught. There was an, I, I don't know if you saw that on camera or not. That was another one of those bass. Just followed me up right then. They're following it, they ain't, they ain't wanting to commit to it. Oh boy, that's a digging. <laughs> it's a digging right there, man. I got tapped two or three times as it was falling down, just smaller fish. And this one here, I mean, look at that bluegill. He's not very big. He's probably, I don't know, five inches or so, six inches. But man, when he took off, I've knocked that jig back down in there. He ain't hooked very deep, but he's deep enough. There we go. Deep enough is hard to get out. I've mentioned this in a couple other videos. I'll say it again because I love it. I've put me a magnet here on my gear track, y'all, so I can have me some extra jig heads out, and I can also just put my pliers on there, and it keeps them handy up here where I need them, but it keeps me from knocking them overboard, too. That's a cheap kayak accessory right there, but it's worth its weight in gold. I have, I have, I got another fish. I was going to say I have made use of that magnet since I have installed it on here. And this little guy right here, if I was after catfish bait, I'd make use of him. But it's his lucky day. He's been caught on a day where he's getting to go home. See you, buddy. Hang on, I'm still right here at this dang old tree. I'm probably just going to sit here till I quit getting bit. Ain't no, I've said it in my catfish videos, ain't no reason to leave fish to go find fish. Out here tonight, I ain't looking for any one species or any certain size or nothing like that. I'm just, I'm wanting to catch fish. As many as I can get, whatever kind I can get. So if I'm on some right here, I ain't gonna leave it till I quit getting bit. Is that a fish? Boy, it is a fish, y'all. <laughs> Look at this. What is that? Oh, that's another, that's a white bass. That's a white bass right there. I, I thought I'd pulled my jig up to a, a limb and it was kind of pulling back on me there a second. Yeah, that's a little white bass. That's species number three. We've now got, I just, I just ripped my men off there too, doggone it. So we've got bluegill, yellow bass, and now white bass. I think these things are, I think they're in here. I, I was uh, over here at that tree, and I saw some splashing going on over here. Something was busting some of the minnows. So I, I come over here and I threw at this log here. That's where I got that white bass. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna start making my way on down through here in this pocket, just throwing all the stuff. It, these fish could be anywhere. There's all kinds of bait in here and whatnot. And so, uh, like I said, I'd got that one there. So I'll make a few more casts over here. But uh, you know, again, these just fish all up and down through here. And this bait, they gonna eat it. There's another one. Whatever it is, is a pulling. That's a bluegill. <laughs> I thought it was another white bass. He was pulling so dang hard. He's bluegill today, man. I, I ain't got no big ones yet. But the ones I have gotten have been feisty out here today. I had let that jig sink down pretty good ways. I don't have my graph on this kayak. I didn't put it on because I've got it wired up now on this kayak. So this fall and winter when I start using this kayak more for 
catfishing when our water level drops. I can be able to put my graph on here, but for this style of fishing, this ultralight fishing, doing what I'm doing out here today, I don't need a, I don't need a graph on it. Um, fishing, you know, upper part of the water column with, within 10 feet of the surface most of the time, unless I just happen to, you know, be out on the main channel and and letting it drop a little further, but. I don't need a graph to tell me I'm I'm that shallow. <laughs> but I don't know exactly how deep it is right here where I'm at. It's probably six foot or so, six, eight feet. But I'd let that I'm getting hit down there, just they're just pecking it. I'm down there near bottom now on this thing. But them bluegill man, let me tell you, they've been fired up today. They're happy to see me, I guess. I'm happy to see them too. I, I just I enjoy this style of fishing, and I don't even care what. As long as there ain't no channel cat, I don't care what bites. We don't want to catch no channel cats today. I spoke their name. I've probably just conjured one up, but other than that, I like catching anything on the ultralight. Even the channel cats, they fight hard. They can be a good time. They just get your line all twisted up, get it slimed up. Usually got to retie. So I prefer not to catch them. But today, since I've spoken their name, you mention the word channel catch, you're probably going to catch one. That's a little tip there for you who are out there trying to catch one. Some of you's into that kind of thing. I got something right here. I hope it ain't a channel cat. He's a pulling. Look at this. Well, here's species number four, y'all. This is a yellow perch. Look at that, man. Is that cool or what? I'm going to get him up here. I don't want to lose him. Y'all, I know this yellow perch here, it's not a big deal for a lot of you, especially up north. But down here where I live, we have these here. Open your mouth, buddy. I'm going to show you off to the world. Maybe. If you open up, you can be famous, Yellow Perch. You'd be the most famous Yellow Perch on YouTube. But I was going to say, we have these here in East Tennessee, but they're not very common. This one's got a crooked tail, too. Look at that. He's had a broke tail. He's got a deformity there. He says, don't make fun of him because he's got the deformity now. <laughs> well, these Yellow Perch, they're not very common. I've probably caught less than 20 of them. In my whole life, I mean, certain rivers and stuff around here will have them more than others. But out here where I'm at today, I'm on Melton Hill today, I've probably caught less than 20 total in my life. That's pretty cool. Get out of here, buddy. Hey, you going? All right, y'all. Species number four, yellow perch. There's another one. This is going to be a bluegill, though, but it's the first one I've caught that I can actually film. I had a bass fisherman roll up in here a few minutes ago, y'all. It's like that movie Wayne's World again. Bass fisherman comes in, game off. They leave, game on. <laughs> I just don't like talking on the camera when there's people around. Never have all these years doing YouTube. I never have gotten used to it. That's that bass fisherman. He's in here in this little pocket, you know, cast and whatnot. And he's going to hear everything I'm saying. I'm going to hear everything he says. He was by himself, but, you know, I just, I'll come out here tonight and be by myself. guess technically I'm not. I'm talking to you all, but you know what I mean. I just wanted to come out here tonight and catch some fish. And I am doing that, that's for sure. But I want to be by myself while I did it. Let's get a little me time, get a little alone time. And enjoy these fish. And I'd like to find some bluegill a little bigger than what I'm getting, but I'm going to take what I get. They still, they fun to catch on this setup. As long as your tackle ain't too big, you can enjoy any size fish. Now, I've had this rod here for 
few years now. This is a St. Croix Panfish Series rod. It's six foot long, ultralight action. I got two pound test trout magnet line on there. And uh, just a small, cheap Abu Garcia reel. And it's a dang good setup for, you know, these fish here. If it's five, six inches long, any species, it's going to give you a good time. But it's still big enough, or still strong enough, that when you hook into a, a larger bass or, a, you know, drum or carp or something like that, you take your time and you got to play your drag, you know. But you play the fish out and you can get it in. I've caught some pretty, boy, look at that cast right there. You think this is day one. I skipped that bait. I hit the water behind me, went over that limb. Good golly. And I've got a fish on right there too. Look at that. <laughs> well, I don't guess I'll edit it out since that happened, but look at this. I've got that wrapped all around in branches. Lord, Lord help me y'all. What a mess this is. <laughs> Hang on, fish. I'm coming for you. Oh, I'm having. I'm gonna try to work it around all these branches here. I'm gonna have to just get over here by hand and do it. Doggone it! <laughs> that was the worst cast of all time, and I've made some bad ones, but that had to be the worst of all time. Let me just break that whole branch off. That'd be easy. Well, I literally did break the whole branch off. Good golly, y'all! This has turned me, every time I do a ultralight video, it turns into a blooper fest. And I made the worst cast ever and still caught a fish on it. Let me just get all this unwrapped here. I don't even know how I've done this. Hang on, bluegill. Let me just break off another piece of it. That may be the way to do it. Just keep breaking off pieces of the branch here till it comes free. There we go. We got him now. You hit it the wrong time, Bluegill. Man, oh man. And, look at here. I just noticed that. Bit my tail the gulp off too. Doggone it. That was a bad series of events there, y'all, but it worked out in the end. I didn't break my jig off there. My line's a little a little rough. I'm just going to retie this whole thing, y'all. Bear with me. Give me a second here. The blooper fest has started again on an ultralight video. But I'm going to retie. I'm going to strip off some of that line there where that kind of got a braided on the branches. When you got two pound test line, a small nick, I mean, you you know, you go down to half a pound, one pound test, you know, when, you, when you've got that abrasion on there. I don't give you a lot of leeway, so I'm going to strip that part off, retie, get me a fresh gulp on there, and we'll get back over here and start catching some fish if I can make some better casts than that. There's one. Y'all, I got retied and repositioned here. We're going to keep making our way down through here and see if we can get some more fish. Here's another bluegill. Another small bluegill. They've all been on the smaller side tonight. I may look into a bigger one here before it's said and done. I've done better on a bigger bluegill on Melton Hill this, well, the last few months just out on the main channel. Just out there, just let that jig just fall down along the, the rocks and everything. It gets real deep real quick out in the main channel here, but these pockets have held different species, but the bluegill have been subpar. But I'm happy tonight anyway. Got the got that yellow perch, man. I'm still pumped up about that. I know a lot of you, especially up north and stuff, y'all got yellow perch and really big numbers, but down here it's just not something, it's just not a common catch down here. So, every one I get, it's like, oh, that's that's unique, you know. Just something a little different. 
So that's pretty cool. I'm happy about it. Don't take much to impress me with the ultralight. Here's another one. That's another bluegill right here. All these trees down through here, y'all. I mean, they've, I'm not doing anything, anything special coming down through here, you know, just casting at all this stuff, all this cover. That's one of the things that's I really like about this style of fishing. It's just so simple. Some jig heads, some gulp minnows, and you just cast it out and let it fall. And most of the fish I catch are on the fall. Is it things just working its way down the water column? They just you just feel thump, or you'll see your line twitch, or your line will start swimming. So it's just it's simple and easy, and I like simple and easy. And I like catching fish. So this is a good combination. <laughs> right there's another. Just like that. I'll let it fall down just a few seconds there. And next bite. That one's real tiny. Get on out of here. Catch a lot of them that size. You can... You can avoid fish that size. Well, something come up splashing right there, wasn't it? I got that leaf. Now he come up and hit the, the jig and the leaf. Or the blade of grass or whatever it is. Now if I tried to cast that jig on that blade of grass, I'd have never hit it. By saying you can, you can avoid them smaller bluegill, avoid catching them anyway, by using a bigger hook. You can go to, I've got a number eight hook on these jig heads, but you could go up to like a, you know, a little bit larger size and, and prevent some of them bluegill from hooking up. You could also go to the larger size gulp minnow too. They make a two and a half, a three and a four inch, and you go to those sizes and you'll get hit. You'll feel them down there just tap, 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 pecking. But uh, the smaller bluegill won't be able to hook up. So it'll eliminate those bites and allow you to get it down deeper in the water column where you oftentimes find the better quality fish. But you do that, and you're not going to go out and catch 100, 150 fish in an evening either like you can do with these one-inchers. So, you know, it's all about what you're after. Sometimes if I'm just targeting bass specifically, I'll go out with the three-inch and a and a 132nd ounce jig head with a, a number two hook and that'll just kind of eliminate the bluegill with the exception of the really big bluegill or the sunfish and that allows you to kind of focus on the bass but again you do that you don't get nearly the number of bites and when I come out here this evening here I'm I was wanting to have me a 50 to 100 fish kind of afternoon just I wanted constant action out here and that's what I've had so I'll gladly sacrifice some of the quality and catch some of them three inch bluegill just to have the the fun of getting bit non-stop fishy no one over here y'all I've been working my way down the other side of this pocket this side still had a little bit of sun on it. The sun is setting over there on, along the other side, so it's been in the shade as I was working my way up it. And this side was still getting a little sun. I thought, I'll just come down through here and make some casts, see what's going on, hit this, all these trees and debris and whatnot, but ain't been much happening over here. I do have this big school of minnows right here, though. All these tiny, just mil thousands there. Threadfin shad, there's just millions of them out here right now, though. And that gold minnow is almost identical in size and color. So I'm just working it down. You get a school like this, you'll get fish oftentimes under that school, come up there and bust them. And well, I had me something hit me right in. They'll come up and try to isolate individual fish out of that school. And that's when they get picked off. There's safety in numbers, as the old saying goes. And it's when they get separated from the school that they get 
get themselves in danger and get eaten. And that's what I'm ultimately trying to represent here with my gulp minnow is just a dying shad or dying minnow that's gotten separated from the school and just falling down through there and boom, just easy meal. So I just picked up that jig right there. I see my line. When you just, when you don't even feel them. If you're watching your line, and I'm a line watcher, you just see it start going. And that's what this one here did. I didn't feel him. I just saw my line just start taking off. I'll throw back over where I got him too. There's a log coming up out of the water right there. It's fairly long. I got him right beside that thing, so I'm just gonna let that jig right there fall down beside it too, see if I can get me another one. I tell you, this side of the pocket over here just has been a, a dud thus far. It's been very limited action. I was getting bit on the other side just all the way down through there, but over here, not so much. Well, guys, I have made my way back down here where I started. I have worked all the way up this pocket here and around this side and back down here to this tree where we began the video. For whatever reason, this side of the pocket held a lot more fish than the other side. I got just a few bluegill coming down back, back down through here just sporadically, and they were smaller, but I didn't really have anywhere on this side of the bank that was just a tree where i was getting one after another after another down through there but uh nevertheless you know i still caught a bunch of fish out here this evening got four different species bluegill white bass yellow bass and i got that yellow perch which was a fun surprise i just don't get those very often so anytime i do even when they're really small like that one was it's just a it's a it's a fun surprise it's a unique catch for me but uh, anyway guys had a good time this evening it was a short trip for me but this this video has probably ran a little long just because I flapped my gums too much while I'm fishing. But nevertheless, I had a good time. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.